What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. With this video, we are jumping into Dark Crisis Young Justice issue number 2. We had last left off with Impulse, Superboy, and Tim Drake all being transported to a strange fantasy world. Going against Mighty Endowed, they are saved at the last minute by Cassie, aka Wonder Girl as they try and traverse this new place that they're in, try to figure out what is actually going on back in their reality. That Cassie is still there, and right now, she is looking for all three of the boys, trying to see where they went and hoping that nothing has happened to them. Now, make sure that you guys have subscribed to the channel, you've liked this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number two, we pick up exactly where we left off. With this mysterious Wonder Girl coming out of nowhere, she is trying to let them know that she has been here a while. She is acting as if she is from their reality, letting them know that she cannot wait to show the guys around. They sit here in awe as Wonder Girl takes on Mighty Endowed all by herself. And usually, this isn't a hard fight. In fact, the Young Justice has fought against Mighty Endowed before. But some reason, some way, she is more powerful now. Even so, she is no match for Wonder Girl. With this B-list villain being taken down, now the guys gotta wonder, what do we do next? We have no idea where to even take her. She also looked like she was just waiting for them. But Cassie, she has a better idea. Hopping on the super cycle, they all take off, leaving Mighty Endowed behind. And while Connor is telling Bart that he should probably lighten up, Tim Drake knows that something is off. Wherever they are, whenever they are, there is one thing that he forgot about, and it is the feeling working with Young Justice. Having these young peers, having all of his friends around him, it really is something that he has missed. This is when Oracle comes through the radio, letting them know that there is a crisis and Young Justice is needed to go fight it. With Tora being their next opponent, Tim Drake does ask if they should call in some backup. Jonathan Kent, Damian Wayne, anybody that might be closer. And this is when this Cassie, she lets it be known that she doesn't know who any of those heroes are. And so while it puts the three boys at pause, they still have a job to do. As they get to Metropolis, this is where they find Tora, a villain that they barely remember ever fighting. The memory does come back to them, but they are still able to make quick work of her. With them quickly winning this fight, they're trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Trying to figure out if maybe this is some kind of alternate dimension or something. Wonder Girl saying that there has been something going on and she has been waiting for them. But whatever is going on, she doesn't have the answers, but she knows somebody that just might. Taking us back over to Earth Zero, we have Cassie, aka Wonder Girl, as we know her in current time and current costume. And she has come to have a conversation with Arrowette. You know, going on about financial aid and not being able to afford college. And then going on talking about superheroes and their toxicity. And Arrowette really just acting like she is severely traumatized by her experience of being a superhero. And the Wonder Girl does try and relate to her. She really does try to have a conversation and be understanding. But Arrowette just doesn't seem to be listening or want to listen in any way, shape, or form. Even going as far as letting her know that she is going to help her find the guys. But after that, she will never help her again. That's what takes us back to our really random fantasy reality. Taking us to the Watchtower. And this is where we have the Justice League. This is exactly how the Justice League looked when Young Justice had started out. 
Rose. As they try and piece everything together, they are all quickly met by individuals of the Justice League. We have Connor and Superman sitting down having a conversation. Now, the first conversation we see is Superman and Connor along with Wonder Girl. And what Superman is doing is offering the cape to Connor, saying that he deserves it, saying that it is his right. Bart having a conversation with the Flash, this Flash being Wally West. Wonder Girl also being involved in this conversation, they have come to offer him the mantle of the Flash cut over to Batman, Wonder Girl, and Tim Drake, and they are offering him Batman for him to take up the mantle. Now, Tim Drake, he's trying to figure out what is actually going on. This is everything that he has ever wanted. At least one point in time in his life, this is what he wanted. He always assumed that Damian Wayne was going to take up the mantle. And then there's a conversation about spoiler. Tim Drake no longer interested in her because he he is dating Bernard, and Batman tells him that this is just a phase, that Stephanie is his destiny. And so when the three boys, they come back together, they have this discussion, trying to figure out what all of this means. Each of them were offered something that they truly wanted, each of them wanting to take over the role of their mentor. Tim Drake knows that that was not his Batman. His Batman would never say something like this is just a phase. Bart is also not a big fan of having just Wally West as the mentor. Now, Connor on the other hand, he doesn't really see anything wrong with this place. Saying, why would we possibly have to go back? Because by all accounts, for Connor, this place is amazing. Not only that, he got offered to be Superman. To be the next one to take Clark Kent's place. And so while they have this little debate, this little bit of an argument, each of them do bring up the fact that Wonder Girl was in the room with them having this conversation. But ever since then, none of them have seen her. This is what takes us to Earth Zero. Cassie having a fight with Red Volcano, but she isn't really here to fight. She is here looking for Red Tornado, and it doesn't take long for Red Tornado to come to her aid. Putting down Red Volcano, and Wonder Girl has just come here to ask for a little bit of help, trying to find the boys wherever they might be. She is slowly forming up this team so that they can go find them while nobody else is out there even looking for them. Picking back up with the three, they go looking for Cassie. Taking the Supermobile, they are making their way across this desert, seeming to be nothing but flat land. Something happens. A rock comes up right in the middle of their path. The super cycle getting thrown off to the side. We see a crack in the ground and zombies come pouring out of it. The three of them going in to do this brawl against some zombies, but they quickly recognize that there is something wrong with their abilities. Connor grabbing the other two and getting them out of here. They see a cave system up ahead. Making their way over there, this is when they run in to Lex Luthor, Captain Boomerang, and Deathstroke. The Trinity of Trauma. And laying before them, we have Wonder Girl. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Alright, so for me, this, this has not been really enjoyable. You know, my first big issue is when we cut over to Cassie going to Arrowette. Because when Cassie first goes up to her, Arrowette is sitting there with a friend. And they do make it a point to point out her pronouns, but then never introduce her at all in this story. Like, what was the point of introducing Arrowette's friend just so that you could say that she has pronouns? That's really what it was seeming like. You know, and I'm definitely not one to say that you're trying to push a narrative, but it seems to me like this was just a throwaway character so that you could introduce somebody that has some pronouns. And while that's not necessarily a problem, as you continue on through this comic, having Mighty Endowed, having all of these individuals, having freaking Batman say that Tim Drake being bisexual is just a phase, it seems like you're doing this just to make some individuals in the 
fandom upset just to say that you can do it because the truth is Batman in any era or uh, okay I should say almost any era would never say something like this is just a face maybe 1950s Batman I'll give you that but we're talking about 1990s 2000s Batman a much more evolved Batman a character that has grown so much and to be completely honest, it probably wouldn't even be a topic of discussion because representation at that point in time wasn't really significant. And don't get me wrong, I am 100% on board with some great representation. This just didn't feel like that was it. It felt more like you were putting this in your comic to really just take jabs at the previous years of comic books. Which is fine if you didn't like reading them, but there are some really awesome stories in there that you are completely avoiding. Instead, you would rather focus on the worst of the comics. You know, I'm really surprised they did, didn't do anything with Wonder Woman and the whole bondage issue. And that takes you back to the golden age of comics. It's just a little bit disappointing. You have the opportunity to really write an amazing story and you're focusing on identity politics and things of that nature instead of actually focusing on making this an awesome story where we have the Young Justice back together again. This is only issue number two, so I'm gonna give it some time, give it an opportunity. It's a Dark Crisis tie-in story, so we're gonna be covering it just so we can see where this leads to and who is manipulating everything behind the curtain. But this issue, it definitely was not for me. You know, if identity politics and all of that is important to you, this might be a comic that you are interested in picking up. It will be interesting to see the trinity of trauma, see how this is going to play into the entire narrative of everything going on. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.